Welcome back to The Big Show. It's the magic of the musicals where we talk to the big stars. You've heard them all. Jerry Springer, Michelle Williams, Graham Norton, they're all here. And now we've got three of the most gorgeous, talented, sexy, delicious ladies Yeehaw! in show Bring business. I think so. They're the Dynamos from Mamma Mia, which is on at uh, the big theatre. It's the only show that anybody seems to talk about these days. And Sally-Ann Triplett, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm a bit hot. Well, that'll be because I'm sat next to you and the tension is unbearable. It is, and also because the tennis is on. Jane Gannett, how are you? I'm very well, thank you very We've much. We've met before many times. We have indeed. You're an old favourite. Why won't you leave the show? Can't you get work elsewhere? No. You're so gorgeous and so talented. We'll get back to you in a minute. She's my version of Jane McDonald. Get out of here. <laughs> what did you just say? I said you're a cheeky person. <laughs> Another old friend of mine is Katie Seacombe. How are you? I'm very well. Ladies, it's lovely to talk to you. And how nice that this show's still going. It's nothing to do with that DVD, is it? Nothing to do with that, no. It's just, um, you know, the fact that there are children coming that are two years old. Nothing to do with the DVD. Uh, it, no, it's, look, it's a ridiculous show. It, I mean, I, I've never felt so good doing a show. It's just happy. Yeah. And us, we have a laugh, and it doesn't really sometimes feel like working at all. It's just, although it's been very hot recently, which is quite hard to deal with. But it's just brilliant fun. Be careful what you say, because it might stop paying you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll stop there. No, it's 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 um it, it's the magic of ABBA and it's the magic of this show. I think it's cuz it's just set on that island and everything's just relaxed and there are people here that have been here 10 years and they don't want to leave because they just love it it's a great atmosphere and god do we need a laugh chain i mean this is what the show we need right now isn't it to uplift everything and make us feel good about ourselves you're not gonna get political on me are you you're not expecting <laughs> me to say something erudite and clever Come on, Jane. <laughs> no i think that the lot has to do with the uh, political climate quite honestly i mean we are in a recession as we know and if you're going to spend 60 quid of your money or 30 quid of your money then what better way to spend it than on a feel good show that you come out and I don't know a person who, who comes to see it who doesn't come out singing the songs or at least feeling like they've had the most wonderful night and I know it sounds ridiculous to keep saying it but it's true and that is why I'm here all these years later <laughs> and Casey of course this is a bit of a fun gig for you really because for the first time you've got a team because you guys have really got to be friends and get along or it just wouldn't work would it yes well I, I have to say because I'm uh, being recorded that I get on with the girls I do get on with you really I was going to say something really horrible then <laughs> you see she thinks she's back in Les Mis doesn't she <laughs> no they're great and I tell you what it, the, the one of the reasons why this show sells and why it works is because it's about women's friendships and, and female friendships and how people bond and um, I'm very thankful that I get on with these lovely girls because it's the core of the show so Sally it would be tough if you hated each other wouldn't it it would be very hard getting in that blimmin' lycra every night, which is uh, no mean feat. Um, I mean, we have, I think, the best scene together in, in the show. And it's just, it's just uh, it just works. It just fits. And, uh, and it's brilliant. It's funny, because I've said this before, and I don't mean to be disparaging about the show, but until you three come on together, it really doesn't quite start. Your opening is kind of when we all get into the party spirit, let's be honest. Darling, it's all about us three. What can I say? <laughs> it is all about the dynamos, I have to say. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. But it's very it's very important that the dynamos click and work yeah, as a they're, team. They're the heart, I think, of the show. And I mean, have... I've always asked for the dynamos, haven't I, Jane? You know, every time, because it seems to me that you're the one that we end up loving, in a way. Well, me personally, don't. Well, of course, and we know why, because of your frocks and your Jane McDonald-esque <laughs> posture. <laughs> Thank you, I don't know what to say to that. I love oh. Jane McDonald. Don't get me wrong, Jane, if you're listening, I think you're fantastic. And actually, I'm, I'm rather flattered. Sally, you know what I'm saying, though? There is an element of that once she's in drag. I mean, in costume. <laughs> Sorry. So I really don't know. What, do you know what? Jane is the sexiest woman I've met. And nothing like Jane McDonald. Well, Jane's sexiest Well, No, I love Jane McDonald. She's one of my closest pals. No, I'm, I mean it in a nice way. Jane is... Uh, well, I, can I just say, I don't know Jane McDonald. I'm sure she's lovely. But Jane Gannett can wear these costumes with a plum. All right? That's all I'm going to say. But, I mean, you have got the best gig in a sense. I mean, she has to do the hard work. Sally yeah. does the hard work. You get all the laughs and then you come on and you've kind of got to be odd I don't I really don't like the tenor of this interview today it's just going so badly what well, odd I don't know Toffee knows no I think yeah I think that in actual fact I do play it differently than it's usually played because I'm short and most Tanyas have been tall so I had to plump for something and that was odd that's my excuse 
The thing for me is when I watch you live, and I've seen you so many times, in fact, I've stopped coming, I'm so exhausted seeing this show time after time because you just have to put so much into it as the audience. I mean, you can't just sit and watch it. You've got to clap and stand up and join in. You've got great charisma on stage, and I think that's the reason you're still here. It'd be very easy to replace you. There's a lot of actresses out of work, but you've just got it. Come on, Jane. Come on, Jane. Tell us how you do it. Where's the picture in the attic? Come on. Where is it? I have a picture in the attic. And and I'm an old tart. What else can I tell you? And you're good at it. That's the main thing. Sally, let's talk about all your careers because there's a reason why you're here. You've got to be established. You've got to know what you're doing. And you've got to have a tremendous set of lungs that you can sing this damn thing eight times a week because it's not easy, is it? No, it's not easy. Apparently, I just do all the hard work, (laughs) especially in this heat. (laughs) You just have to turn up. I just turn up and make everybody laugh. (laughs) No, it it isn't easy. um, You know, when people get a gig, um, it's great. And uh, I think the best part of any job is getting that phone call. (laughs) Then you you rehearse and you think that's kind of hard work. But the hardest bit is... Ladies and gentlemen, this is your half hour. It's a half hour hour call. That's that's the hard work. That's where it comes in. That's it, you see. That's what it is. But the, the, the hard work is maintaining eight shows a week at the moment I'm doing seven shows a week which is like some sort of miracle for me because I'm not used to it but it's maintaining that and people that aren't you know people that are given that and aren't used to it it's a huge shock because it's very tough I mean my day revolves around what I'm doing in the evening and I really can tell I've seen all three of you perform live in various productions in different roles as well very different to the ones you're in now and you're so good at what you do individually and they need a personality for each of your roles you couldn't just get the average standard dance school musical theatre actress for this could you? Uh, oh uh, no uh, no it, I think it is a lot of personality and, and with, with a certain amount of skill married together I think that's kind of what, what you're aiming for. Um, but I think personality, in my case, more so than skill. And can I just say, I didn't go to dance school. <laughs> but you have, you've got to be able to sing this song. Because the thing I always notice when you go to bars and they're doing karaoke, everybody thinks they can sing ABBA until they try. Yeah. ABBA is the hardest stuff to sing. It really is. Before I started this job, I did a few ABBA tributes. And it's just so difficult. I mean, the, the the range is ridiculous. It's really low, really high. And, you know, and it's making those songs um, mean something. Um, sometimes it works better than others. Like, Winner really works. Sleeping Through My Fingers really works for me, anyway. Um, Dancing Queen really works. Um, and it's just, you know, it, it, but they are truly difficult. And for you, that's your moment of glory slipping through my fingers. That's the moment where we all have a tear in our eye. Probably one of the only few genuine moments where you have to pull it out of the bag and prove what a wonderful actress you are. Because that's the moment between a mother and a daughter. We've all seen it in the film. Yeah, and I mean, for me personally, I've got two kids and it doesn't really require a huge amount of acting. Um, You're not selling yourself here, Sally. Come on. Well, you know, what can I say? I'm a normal girl from Finchley. I, you know. But it, it's true. Um, when you've got kids and, and my son is 18 and my daughter's eight and that's what's happening. They're just growing up before my eyes. And, um, and it's, a, it's a great scene. I love it. And of course, Jane, your stage pres- presence is second to none. You've got it. Were you born with it? What will that be? Stage I'm really, presence. Stage yeah. presence. Um, yes. No. I don't Buy know. I bought it at the shops. Yeah. Yeah. What I mean is, you can't be trained to be what you know, guys are. No. No. I'm. I'm not trained in this particularly. I can. I dance a bit when I was young. Can't sing, but I love doing it. And as long as they'll pay me, that's absolutely fine. And all three of you are funny people. You've got to have a funny bone or you wouldn't be able to do this because there's a lot of comedy in it, isn't there? There is quite a lot of comedy in it. But I think the comedy comes from our connections, our sort of relationship. So you don't play it for laughs, you play it for the situation because the situation is quite hilarious. (laughs) You know, you've got three possible dads and you don't know which one of them it is and they've all turned up on this island and that's, that's the comedy situation you find yourself in. So you play it for real and then hopefully the audience join in and they laugh and they cry and they Which enjoy themselves uh, tonight <laughs> apparently <laughs> tonight and Katie where do you think your funny bone came from um <laughs> Now, I think he's pushing me into a corner with that. <laughs> yeah. Possibly my father. Your father? Yeah. You have a father? Yes, yeah. my father was Harry Seacombe. So, yes, I think... I don't know if I inherited it. I don't know if you can inherit it, but um, I certainly was able to watch him a lot. And, he, you know, and uh, it's quite technical. 
I think you can learn. I don't know how you girls feel about it. I was just interviewing Maz Murray the other day, who's Killer Queen in We Will Rock You, and her godfather was Bob Monkhouse. It's no wonder you're going to have a funny bone. Yeah, I mean, you know, neither of my parents were in the business, and um, I suppose my dad, my dad was very dry in his humour, and I suppose that's sort of my sort of humour as well. I don't know. Um, yeah, I, 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 do you learn it? I don't know. I, I did Acorn Antiques with the mas- you know, the masters of comedy, Julie Waters, Victoria Wood, Celia Imry, and I, you know, I suppose you can learn it, but I think, like most things, it has to be in you somewhere to start I've got a list of some of the shows between you that you've done things like Guys and Dolls and Oliver and Cats and uh, Chicago and of course Madame Tenade and Les Miserables Chitty and things like that loads of TV stuff as well why do you think you last all of you and I mean this to all of you when so many have to pack in and get a proper job we'll go around the room Sally first okay no in all seriousness um, it's because I Sally still love it and that's the reason I, I, I still want to do it and I'm still here. I could have packed it in um, hundreds of times. And r- in recent years, it's got more and more difficult to maintain because people want celebrities or they want competition winners. And for me, that, that is, that is, that's what kills what I do because I can't compete with that. So you have to love it. You just, you just have to just want to keep doing it. Would Marcus please come... Marcus, who's Marcus? Marcus? RMD. Oh, he sounds very important. Yes, he is very. Without him, you haven't got a show, really, have you? <laughs> Absolutely true. Absolutely true. And of course, for you, Jane, why are you still here? I mean, is it that dedication? Because I notice, and I know I keep saying this, but I've never seen you phone it in. You genuinely, even on your second show, still make it look like you're twelve, and it's the first time you've ever done it. That's because I'm slightly <laughs> simple. No, she is I, I, yeah, I am twelve in my head. In all honesty, my daughter has more sense about her, and she's eleven <laughs> than I have. She will literally go, "Oh, mum." I do have quite a young spirit. I think I have quite a sort of. Yeah, I like going out and playing, and I, I've known nothing else in my life. Um, and I just, yeah, I do still love it, and I love live theatre more these days than um, telly and that because same thing as Sally's saying about the celebrity thing same thing uh, different um, situation but you've got it's very young now so if I'm going to be playing something on telly it's probably not going to be that interesting a part I'm not going to be able to dress up in fabulous clothes and have all the funny lines and have all the funny moves and do the stuff I'm going to be somebody's mother Mm. or grandmother and I'm going to be up the back going do you want a cup of tea love Mm. and I'm not interested in doing that so that's you know what I do love and that's why I'm here in all seriousness even though you keep saying I'm still here that's why I agree with the other what the girls have said I, I agree that I, I'm here because I love it I'm here because you know you have such a laugh and, and, and it keeps you young and also I think this job just shows how wonderful it can be to be a woman of a certain age and to be the centre of the show I mean what other show really Apart from, I don't know. Well, I don't know what oh, other show Chicago really that is, is Chicago. Women. Yeah, oh, yeah, yes. older women. And but but I mean, really, there's very few shows that that celebrate the female of a certain age and again, really, you're not the leads in this. There's a young girl and a young boy who fall in love. They're the story. Ooh. But we end up remembering you guys. I don't, know, don't, I don't know who you're talking about. No, no, it's all about. Us. Are there other young people in this show? Aren't there? Oh. They're the Have they written them out since I last saw it? <laughs> <laughs> We're working on it. No, no. This is a tremendous show, and if you want a good old laugh and a feel-good show for this time when we all need a good laugh, this is the show. And I've never not seen a standing ovation at the end of you. Oh my god, it's just crazy! And when we come out of that lift at the end, it's you just even if we're singing sharp like Marcus says we always are Um, you feel like you feel like a pop star firstly and it's just it's to make people feel that good um, and sometimes I just think well what are we doing I mean we're you know we're just prancing about and singing ABBA songs but you know we've got them to that point we've got to whip them up into a frenzy and some nights I mean I go back on the tube and I I've always been somebody to just let it go straight away, and this is hard to let go. You go back on the tube, haven't they got a car for you? No, darling. Uh, Goodness, what, Jane, in the good old days you'd have had a car? 
No, I go on the tube and the train. Do you I go on the yes, tube, Kate? Do so I? Hell, no, I'll go over the train. Good yeah. Lord, tubes and train. I'm, well, I'm staggered. Ladies, lovely to talk to you. You're all three huge personalities and stars in your CVs. Well, we could spend an hour on each of you. We haven't got time for that, basically. <laughs> Two but, hours uh, for Jane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, doing many things with Jane. Jane, I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> I love you, too. <laughs> we must stop meeting like this, especially on uh, Sally's Bonquet. Yes, we'll leave Sally Bonquet alone. Oh, do you? <laughs> how to edit half this I'm so sorry I just get embarrassed are you woozy are you no I just get embarrassed well I mean every word of it and it's lovely to see you again Katie it's lovely to see you too and congratulations on a tremendous show Sally if anybody wants to see a top West End star at their best you are that in this show Mamma Mia which is on in the West End it's a great show thank you for talking to me thanks very much indeed thank you